Welcome once again to another series on Miniscax assessment of the patient with neck swelling. This is the second part in the series, which involves the questions with answers. Okay, this is the history of the patient that we got in the in the first uh, part one. The details of the history, the important points in the history are highlighted in red, which Please summarize in this side on the left side. Eh? She's a 40-year-old woman from Sarawak who lives near the river, swelling in front of the neck for 20 years. It was painless nodule, progressively increasing in size. And over the last six months, she has difficulty in swallowing, breathing, and she's also very sensitive to cold, so cold intolerance. She's constipated. Inherent laziness and tend to oversleep, and her periods were irregular and scanty, and she had early menopause. She has got no children, which makes her suspect she's in uh, infertility, and she has got similar swellings in the neck in her parents. Okay, this on station two is a questions based on the history. Okay. So please answer the following questions in brief based on the history elicited. Total time for this station is seven minutes with a mark of five marks. Question one, what information is derived from the fact there is a high incidence of goiter in the patient's hometown? The answer is, the patient's hometown is located in an, in an endemic area for goiter and the patient is likely to have endemic iron deficiency goiter. Question number two, in case an ultrasound uh, guided FNAC reveals a neoplasm in these patients, what is the type of neoplasm is likely to be? The right answer is follicular carcinoma. Question number three, what is the likelihood of a daughter developing a goiter and why? The answer is, though the daughter does not share her genes, but she is from the same endemic region and hence carries more than 10% chance of developing a goiter unless the iodine deficiency is corrected. Question number four, based on the history, what is the thyroid status of the patient? The answer is, the patient is hypothyroid. Question number five, what other estimation regarding the patient can you make from the history? The answer, the patient may be harboring other components of the full spectrum of iodine deficiency, including hypothyroidism, psychomotor defects, and impaired mental function. Okay, the next station, station number three, involves the examination of the next in a standardized patient or a mannequin. Okay, and these are the various steps that must be taken in examining a patient with thyroid swelling. First, this is the general introduction, explains the procedure and sterilizes the hand and ensures the patient is seated with an access to examine from behind. Okay, so preferably sitting on a chair. Then you go to inspection, observe the patient from the front and comment on the decubitus, habitus, and nutritional status of the patient. Examine the hands for tremors, sweating, palmar erythema, oncolysis, thyroid acropathy, and others, and comment on any of these. Next, we check radial pulse and comments on the rhythm, rate, and volume. Examine the eyes for the staring look, lid retraction, lid lag, 
exophthalmus and preorbital edema and chemosis. Check for edema and pretibial mixed edema. Comment on the swelling, position, extent, shape, size, margin, surface, skin over the swelling, scars in the neck, and pulsations. Eh? These are the comments you must make on the on inspection. And ask the patient to swallow and also to stick her tongue out. Watching for the movement of the thyroid on swelling. Next, we come to the special test. Conduct the Pemberton sign, the Pember, uh, Pemberton's test. And we also should, should be aware of the Pizillos, Leahy's, Kryles method, Berry sign and Hornet syndrome. Next, we come to the palpation of the thyroid gland from the front and back, commenting on the temperature, tenderness, movement with swallowing and protrusion of tongue. And these are all done by palpating from the front as well as from the side. The next, you come to palpation of the thyroid gland from behind, looking for the consistency and surface, ability to get below the thyroid, palpate the thyroid during swelling, uh, swallowing, check for tracheal deviation and carotid pulse, check for uh, scabbard or trachea by co uh, caucus test, palpate the neck for cervical lymphadenopathy, check for retrosternal extension by percussion above the sternum, auscultate the thyroid gland for brui, and check for slow relaxation for the ankle jerks and also look for proximal myopathy. Next, communicate with the patient during examination, behaves in a prof prof behave in a professional manner, gentle, watches for pain and maintains dignity. When over, patient he thanks the patient and allows the patient to dress. Finally, the final part of the examination involves to give a summary of the findings. And examiner can uh, may ask you for the diagnosis and you must be able to prepare for the provisional and a few diagnos uh, differential diagnoses and give reasons for your diagnosis. The candidates or the student must be able to come to a reasonable diagnosis and the total score for this examination is 50, 44 and the pass mark is 22. So here these are the various grading okay, given for individual procedures that the patient observes. Okay, the examination of the neck is done with the various positions. First is the greetings of the patient and ideally the patient is sitting on a chair and then you continue the various parts of the examination. And the first one is from the front where you inspect for lumps, sight, size, shape, movements on swallowing and tongue protrusion. Then go ahead and do the Prisillo and Pemberton signs looking for skin changes and also continue with palpation for tenderness. The next part is, is the examination from the back, okay, where the patient is sitting on a chair. Here, you palpate for the details of the lumps, retrosternal extension, and movement during swallowing and tongue protrusion. Palpate for cervical limb nodes, especially the deep cervical limb nodes. Describe and palpate them in detail. Look for the carotid pulse, the berry sign, and tracheal uh, compression with the cocker sign. Also, auscultate the lump for fluid uh, thrill or bruit. After this, you come back to the front again where you check for the position of the trachea, whether it is central, and percuss for retrosternal extension of the goiter. 
then look for signs of hyper and hypothyroidism and carry out the special test uh, in the patient for thyroid. After doing this, you come to the summary of the physical findings, okay, and then coming to the possible diagnosis, provisional and uh, differential diagnosis, justifying you with the necessary uh, uh, signs that you detect in the patient. Next, we come to the special tests for thyroid lumps or goiter, which include the Pizilos method for short necks, Pemberton sign where you raise up the arm and the face get congested. Berry sign is the involvement of the carotid pulse. Cocker sign, involvement of pressure on the trachea leading to the stridor. Leahy's uh, method is used to examine each individual lobe of the thyroid. The Kriles method where small numbs can be palpated using pressure on the thumb, on the gland. And also look for Honor syndrome which includes meiosis, ptosis and hydrosis and anophthalmus, retraction of the, the eyeballs. Next, we come to the station number four, questions based on the examination of the patient. Okay, they please answer the questions in brief as possible based on the physical findings. Okay, first question. The patient's blood was sent for estimation of TSH, total T3 and total RE4, and these are the results of the patient. Study the, the values given for the thyroid function test, and the question to answer is, what conclusion can you draw from the report and why? The answer is, since the patient has some hypothyroid symptoms, and an elevated TSH, but normal T3 and normal 4, she can be diagnosed to have mild hypothyroidism. Question number two. Clinical examination reveals a smooth lobulated mass of varying consistency as shown in this picture here, with some areas of firmness and others soft and cystic. It measures about 10 by 9 by 8 centimeters and it is just below the chin to the supraclavicular notch. I eh? can see from the below the chin right to the supraclavicular region. And this is a diagram, CT scan done which of the neck which shows the, the image taken of the patient's neck. Now, what should be the next investigation for this patient? The answer is uh, ultrasound guided FNAC, which will give you the definitive diagnosis of the, of the lesion. Question number three, what is the role of radioactive iodine, RAI, in the management of thyroid disorders? The answer, there are a number of uh, conditions as listed here, which can be for the use of radioactive iodine. 131 and 123. Iodine 131 is used to destroy overactive thyroid tissue in hyperthyroidism, to shrink normally functioning glands if they are causing pressure symptoms because of their size. It, it is also used to destroy differentiated thyroid cells that may, thyroid carcinoma cells that may remain after total thyroidectomy. And iodine 132 one, two, three is used to determine the activity of the impact thyroid gland, whether it is hyper or hypothyroid. It is also used to detect the activity of a nodule. Hyper is cold nodule and hypo is a, uh, a hyper is hot hot nodule and hypo is a cold nodule. And it one, two, three is also used to detect residual thyroid tissue after total thyroidectomy for differentiated thyroid carcinoma. Station number five, 
is a quest station where why were questions are asked especially on the management of the vision question number one what do you understand by operations termed hemithyroidectomy and trotulgarotectomy the answer hemithyroidectomy is lobectomy plus isthmusectomy whereas total thyroidectomy is bilateral lobectomy with isthmusectomy question number two how do you prepare a patient who is diagnosed to have toxic multinodular goiter for surgery the answer all elective surgery should be postponed until the patient is due thyroid or near uteroid state Thyroid control, thyroid status control is done with carbimazole, beta blockers such as propranolol and lugol's iodine given 10 days before the operation. Okay. Question number three, what are the complications of total thyroidectomy? Hemorrhage. Injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerves leading to hoarseness, hypocalcemia, seromas and abscesses, infection, hypothyroidism and hypotrophic scar. Question number four. How do you manage a patient with thyrotoxic crisis? Okay. The answer is use the BWPS scoring tool to establish the diagnosis. And once the diagnosis is established, identify precipita uh, precipitant cause for this uh, thyroid crisis. Eh? Start antithyroid drugs, beta blockers, sometimes have to be given IV, potassium iodide or Lugol's iodine, corticosteroids, and supportive care, IV fluids, acetaminophen for the high. Uh, temperatures and possibly patient must be taken care in a monitored in a ICU. If thyroidectomy has not been done for the patient, then it can be considered if the conservative measures fail. Question number five, what is the ideal operation for a patient diagnosed to have a medullary thyroid carcinoma confined to the thyroid gland and nodal metastasis and no more nodal metastasis. Answer total thyroidectomy plus level six nodal clearance. Question number six What are the indications for surgery in a patient with goiter? Answer Neoplasm or malignancy, toxic adenoma, uncontrolled with medical treatment. Pressure symptoms due to large size and cosmetic effect, and these are usually requested by the patient. Okay, the, the last station five. The, in this station, you will be asked viva questions on the management of the patient. These are some of the questions that can be asked. Question number one What do you understand by? the operations termed hemithyroidectomy and total thyroidectomy. The answer is hemithyroidectomy is lobectomy plus isthmusectomy. Total thyroidectomy is bilateral lobectomy plus isthmusectomy. Question 2. How do you prepare a patient who is diagnosed to have toxic multinodular goiter for surgery? The answer, it is important to remember that all elective surgery should be postponed until the patient is euthyroid or new euthyroid status. Once this status is reached, then the, this can be reached by the patient uh, being given carbimazole, beta blockers such as propranolol at times have to be given IV. And this must be continued postoperatively 
for seven days. Glucose iodine is also given 10 days prior to operation and this will reduce the vascularity of the gland and thereby, and thereby reducing the bleeding. Question number three, what are the complications of thyroidectomy? Hemorrhage, hoarseness of voice due to recurrent laryngeal nerve injury, hypocalcemia due to injury of the parathyroid, seroma, infection, hypothyroidism, and unsightly scars, scar hypertrophy. Question number four, how do you manage a patient with thyrotoxic crisis? Answer, using the BWPS scoring system to establish the diagnosis. First, identify once the diagnosis is established, identify the precipitant, uh, the cause of the crisis. Then start patient on anti thyroid drugs, which are usually pro propyl thiuracil or metimazole, potassium iodide or lugol's iodine, beta blockers, steroids, and supportive care with IV fluids and s -taminophen. Patients should be ideally nursed in ICU, and if thyroidectomy has not been done before, then thyroidectomy should be considered in patients where medical treatment fails. Question number five, what is the ideal operation for a patient diagnosed to have medullary thyroid carcinoma confined to the thyroid gland with no nodal metastasis? The answer, total thyroidectomy with level six limb node clearance. Question number six, what are the indications for surgery for goiter? Malignant change or neoplasm, toxic adenoma, pressure symptoms due to size, and cosmesis and patient requests. We included this last slide here on the assessment of a patient with uh, toxic, that are toxic. Uh, goiter with uh, thyroid storm, eh? thyrotoxic storm, the BWPS uh, method of assessment, birch Otofsky point scale, where the temperature is factors taken are temperature, central nervous system, gastrointestinal or hepatic dysfunction, cardiovascular dysfunction, heart failure, and precipitant history. Okay. So the marks are given, points are given for the various uh, parameters you have mentioned. And if the total is less than 25, the score is less than 25, storm is unlikely. Thyroid storm is unlikely. 25 to 20, 45, it's impending storm. And if it is more than 45, it definitely is established thyroid storm. Thank you for joining me for this uh, session on uh, mini kegs for neck swellings. Please scan this, this uh, QR code for more information on the examination of the thyroid. Thank you and see you again.